everybody. So today we're gonna continue talking about Lilith. Specifically though, in this video, we're gonna talk about Dark Moon Lilith. This is also known as Waldemath's Moon. And if you wanna pull it on astro.com or wherever, whatever you wanna use, the number's probably the same. It is H58. Um, this one is one that I wanted to do its own video on because I think it's probably the most interesting personally. Um, and I think it's probably the most interesting because it's the one that seems to be the least understood. And the shit that you'll find online about it is is so, um, it's so uh, negative. <laughs> Okay, it's, uh, and I just can't get down with that because I don't, um, I don't think that it has to go that way. Can it go that way? Absolutely. I think Dark Moon Lilith can be incredibly challenging, but I don't think it has to be this evil, bad place. And if you, if you search for this online, a lot of what you'll find is that kind of shit, um, which how unempowering is that? To me, to me, Lilith in general, her mythology, it, it's about empowerment. Um, so I, I'm like, eh, no, I want, I want to do my own take on this. And I recently did a class up that, where we talked about the North and South nodes, briefly talked about them and talked about the Liliths, the different Lilith incarnations or what I call the different Lilith incarnations. Um, so I'll briefly go through her mythology just a little bit. I know I did this in the other one, but just in case nobody, it wasn't seen by somebody. Um, in her mythology, <clears throat> Her mythology starts out with her being the first, the first partner or wife of Adam. It is kind of weird. Like, why the fuck did they need to be husband and wife when there were only two people in the world at the time, supposedly? Like, to me, that seems kind of weird. Why they need to put that ownership? <laughs> because, I mean, let's get real. Marriage is ownership. It is. It can be a lovely ownership, but it is ownership. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why that needed to exist um, between the only two people in the world. But whatever. That's a whole other tangent for another time. <laughs> But she's the first partner of wife of Adam. They were created equally from the dirt as equals. Shut the fuck up. Oh my God, these fuckers have been going over my head all day, loud as fucking shit. Sorry, it's really annoying. Um, <laughs> whatever. So she was created from, um, she was created from the same dirt at the same time with Adam, same earth. Um, <clears throat> so she, in this, in this part of her story, she, feels like they are equals. They are equals, but she believes they're equals. She feels like they are equals. And um, then it gets time to fuck and he wants her to be on the bottom and she wants to be on top. And he doesn't like this, pisses him off. So this pisses her off because she's like, well, you're wanting me to submit to you, but we're supposed to be equal and I don't wanna submit. It's one thing if you wanna submit to somebody, but it's another thing if you don't want to and they're like making you, um, that's not equality. So this pissed off Adam, which then pissed off God. And to me, this part of her mythology has to do with the asteroid Lilith. If you want to know why, I'll link the other video. <laughs> and then the mythology splits depending on what you read. You'll either read that she was cast out of the garden. Um, to me, the casting out resonates with Black Moon Lilith. The other version of her mythology is... Um, that she left on her own. She flew away and she left. I was like, fuck you guys, bye, and left. To me, that version of her mythology correlates more with um, true or osculating Lilith, just because the orbit of true Lilith is more wild because it's not an average like Black Moon Lilith, Black Moon Lilith is. <laughs> so um, that's kind of why I put one on one end of the mythology and the other one on the other end of the mythology, if you will. Now, the last part of her mythology has her fucking demons and having demon babies and eating human babies and all this terrible, horrible shit. Now, this is the part of her mythology that I feel like does, does correlate with Dark Moon Lilith or Waldemath's Moon. Now, I want to say that carefully because I, I don't I don't think that she has to be fucking demons or having demon babies or eating human babies. I don't think she has to manifest in such a nasty fucking way. I think she can. I think she, she, she certainly could. But um, she doesn't have to. <laughs> she doesn't have to. Um, I'm going to read something from my class um, so that I can make sure and do this part justice. Um... 
let's see. From here, from there, her story becomes increasingly dark. It has her either fucking a bunch of demons and having demon babies or eating human babies and a bunch of other awful shit. This is a part of L Lilith's mythology that feels like it correlates with Dark Moon Lilith the most, the most of all. The part of Lilith that has been so cast out and demonized for wanting to be an equal and or just wanting to be free that they had to attach a bunch of really horrendous shit as a warning, warning, to all the bad girls out there who might defy the hand of God and man. Now, yeah, because to me, this part of her, of her story is very much a cautionary tale. Like, um, that doesn't need to really exist, but you know, like a cautionary tale for, for, for females that, or, and for people that identify as female or, or what have you, or even just for people in general, I bring up the female thing because Lilith does have an affinity for female energy. This isn't a gender or a sex thing. This is a feminine energy thing. Like she does resonate with feminine energy. Um, that's why I say like bad girl, the bad girls. But I mean, in this context, there could easily be a male that was a bad girl in this kind of context. So it's, again, it's not a gender or a sex thing. It is an energetic thing. <clears throat> but it feels like this part of the story exists solely to caution people that if they defy God or defy authority or defy their, their father or defy their, their partner or whatever, you know, that they, they are then doomed to fuck demons <laughs> or have demon babies or... Uh, eat human children or other awful shit you know to me it just feels like one massive cautionary tale now the thing about this Lilith is that she embraces she embraces this label and doesn't hide away from it she doesn't shy away from the darkness or feel bad about it she doesn't turn away from all the terrible things that have happened to her ideally here she honors them for the person they shaped her to be and makes a sort of makes a sort of peace with all of this I also don't think she has to lean into all the terrible things that Dark Moon Lilith, such a hard word for me to say, Lilith's part of the part of Lilith's mythology deals with. She doesn't have she doesn't have to be bad, though I think the less she embraces and acknowledges the darkness the darkness that she's been through, the more likely this one is to get real nasty when provoked, and rightfully so. You will probably read a bunch of really scary things about Dark Moon Lilith, Waldemath's Moon. And I don't, and I don't think most of them are accurate. This doesn't mean that this one can't be fucking scary and function in a bad way. It probably can, but I do think she is less scary when she comes to terms with all of the stuff that has happened to her and knows the inherent equality that she has been seeking for all along is actually within her since we all have masculine and feminine energy inside of us. Um, this is a little, this is the Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> where we where we come into our own power, uh, in my opinion, and just like the hypothetical dust cloud that it is, it feel this feels like it is the hardest of the Liliths to actualize. Actualizing something like a dust cloud feels feels like it would be difficult. So I feel like here, you know, the, in in the asteroid Lilith, right? She she gets pissed off because the equality that she feels like is there, or should be there, doesn't actually exist. I feel like this Lilith, Waldemath's moon, or dark moon, this version of Lilith knows that they, she might never find equality outside of herself. It may not exist. And there is kind of a peace in coming to terms with that. Now, that doesn't mean that you still don't fight for equality. I'm not trying to say that. But... Ultimately, you should be fighting for it within yourself, most of all. Um, and I think that's something that she kind of, and, I'm, and again, I'm not saying that you should never have a partner or anything like that, <laughs> but that real equality may not actually exist. It may not. And that is something that it does feel like Dark Moon has to come to terms with. And, and figure out that the, that the quality that she's been seeking is inside of her. Because we do, we have both masculine and feminine energy inside of us and it does feel like Dark Moon Lilith could be where we figure that out, which I think is actually a really empowering thing. Um, also, you know, this, is, this, this, this Lilith does not apologize for who she is or what she's what she's been created to be 
She just is. She just, she is. <laughs> She's fucking demons, eating, de eating, eating human babies, having demon babies. This is her. This is what's been created, right? So I feel like more than anything, and I'm not saying that I'm not advocating for anybody to fuck demons or, <laughs> or anything, okay? Or, or to swing towards the more challenging way to deal with this. But um, I, I do think that embracing and acknowledging the trauma from the other Lilith, if you will, um, embracing that trauma, recognizing that that trauma exists, whatever that trauma might be, embracing it and finding a peace with that. Um, I, I do think that is part of this as well. And I think it's through doing that that, you know, perhaps it doesn't have to swing so wildly negative. Dark Moon. I, I, I think when there's a peace made, when there is an acceptance, when there is acknowledging, um, and when there's not making apologies for the way that you are because of the shit that you've been through. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you know, because people can be through a lot of shitty things, right? Can go through a lot of shitty things and they can turn into terrible people. That's not saying that that's okay. But it is acknowledging that I've been through some shit because we all have. I've been through some shit and this is who I am because of this shit. This is how I've changed. This is this is the person that this has turned me into. Um, I do think that there is a, is a peace with acknowledging this. Now, obviously, if you're doing really, say, challenging or negative things with that energy, maybe that should be worked through, you know? And, and again, it doesn't mean even if you are functioning with Dark Moon Lilith that way, it, it's usually justified, right? Like there's the anger and the rage and things with Lilith is justified. But um, again, it matters how you handle it um, for your own sake, for your own peace, if you will, for your own finding peace. You know, which I which I do actually think in coming to terms, which I do think Dark Moon Lilith has a lot to do with. So in saying that, you know, you'd want to look at where or what area of life this maybe plays out in most by the house that Dark Moon falls in, um, by sign would show how this plays out. Um, and then, of course, any aspects that it makes that you want to count. Definitely, I would count the conjunctions, but, you know, whatever else you want to count. Um, it can kind of flesh this out more for you. Definitely bring into the equation um, the planetary ruler of whatever sign Dark Moon falls in because that'll kind of help flesh things out even further. Um, but this is this is kind of the way that I that I go with it. There's also there also is I mean, okay, there also is like a darkness. A dar there is a darkness to her, but it's not like dark, like evil, bad, scary. It's not like that, but it is like it there is a sense of embracing the darkness. Now, I don't think that that necessarily equates to one becoming dark themselves, but just acknowledging that it's there or that the propensity for it is there. I think sometimes, you know, we make friends with these kinds of parts of ourselves, you know, the darker parts of ourselves that we know exist. Um, I think sometimes when we make friends with these parts of ourselves and kind of shake hands with them, they're less likely to come out in negative ways because we acknowledge that they're there. Um, when we hide them or when we try not to acknowledge them or when we pretend like they don't exist, um, same thing when we pretend like trauma hasn't happened or, or what have you, it tends to rear its ugly head. <laughs> you know what I mean? In full force. And sometimes it's not as controllable, um, because we haven't acknowledged it. So to me, this is kind of what, what, what Dark Moon Lilith represents. Um, if you feel like sharing where Dark Moon Lilith is in your chart, how you feel like she might play out in your life um, or in your chart, if you feel like sharing, or if you have any other ideas about this part of her, her mythology, put them down below. Um, if you're interested in having me read for you, it's really fun. Recently, I've done some readings for people incorporating all four Liliths. You do not have to incorporate all four when you read. You can just pick like Black Moon Lilith or whatever. I do recommend though, if you're working with Dark Moon Lilith, because of the, I do feel like to work with Dark Moon Lilith, you probably do need to work with the other ones. This is just my opinion. Opinions are like assholes. But <laughs> I do think that she makes the most sense in the context of the mythology and in the story, the Lilith story in your chart, she'll make the most sense that way. Um, and I think that might be why people universal or not, maybe not universally, but tend to think of her as really bad. I, I'm wondering if they're also taking into account the mythology. Um, I don't know. She could be. 
She could be challenging. She could be bad. But I don't think she has to be. Not at all. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in having me read your Lilith story, let me know. <laughs> and I will put where you can find me below. And I'll see y'all later.